So if you listen to the marketing about artificial intelligence, you'd be forgiven for thinking that AI is just going to do everything automatically. AI is currently being sold as the solution, but if you've tried to integrate it with complex workflows or tasks that require specialist knowledge, you know that that's not true. Instead, it's more beneficial to think of AI as just part of the solution that you're building. It takes a bit of intention, iteration, and careful work to really make AI work for you and your business. In this video, we're going to talk about prompt engineering, which is really the heart of working with language models. But the term prompt engineering really just makes it sound like some complex, inaccessible thing that you're going to have to learn. You may not have used the word prompt before in this way, and you may not consider yourself an engineer. In reality, everyone already possesses all of the skills you need to do this stuff. And in this video, I'm going to show you why. So before we get to the very specific and potentially helpful prompting tips in this video, it's really important to cover two high level principles that are going to help you more than any specific technique that you learn in future. Firstly, although it might seem incredibly obvious, it's really important to define exactly what it is that you're trying to do with AI. In other words, to be very clear on what you want. Language models can be used for many different things, from answering simple questions, formatting data, giving advice, summarizing, digesting, calculating, or reviewing and planning. Now, if you know which of these tasks you want the AI do, just start your prompt by saying that and be specific. But it may be sometimes that you're not actually clear on what you're trying to do, and you're really just trying to explore what AI could do for you. In this case, it might be that AI can initially be more of a research or brainstorming partner. Using a chat model like ChatGPT to iterate on your ideas, much like you would with a colleague, is a great way to refine your initial prompt. You can just say, I'm trying to create a prompt that does this and explore the different options with it. You could even give it lots of context like documents, websites, meeting transcripts. AI is really good at finding patterns and structure in lots of unstructured information and can help you even if you don't know what you want yet. So if you know what you want, but you can't quite get the AI to do what you want, then you're likely going to need to be more specific with your prompt. It's useful to think of the AI, certainly language models, as these very capable but junior interns at your company. The intern is very intelligent, knowledgeable, excels at tasks with clear instructions, but they may falter when you give them these open-ended, ambiguous, or highly nuanced tasks. For example, let's say we have a transcript of a meeting and we pass it to a language model so that we can get a summary for our team. Please review the attached meeting minutes and prepare a summary for the team. Now, this leaves a huge amount of ambiguity about what a good summary might be for the team. There's so much room for assumptions and even errors on the language model's part. If instead, though, our prompt is more like this, we're much more likely to get a result that we want. Here, we don't just have our basic request. We follow up with specific information on what we want it to summarize and even give guidance on the format and style of the response. So if you know what you want and you're being very specific, that's generally going to get you most of the way there. But if you really want to explore what these language models can do and take your prompts to the next level, there are a few tips that can be really helpful. Number one is to define a persona. You can start by explaining to the AI who it's supposed to be. This actually helps narrow down the vast amount of information it can draw from and tailors its responses for your specific needs. For example, you could say you're a property manager responsible for assessing tenant issues, including reviewing and appropriate, etc., etc. And this persona helps the AI understand the context and provide more relevant and accurate responses. Number two is to guide the response format. You can actually describe the exact format in which you want the AI to respond. Clear instructions on format ensure that the output is structured and easy to use. For instance, you might request, please provide your response in no more than five bullet points, summarize at the end, and show your findings step by step. Number three is to provide examples. Examples really prime the language model for the kind of jobs that you're going to give it in the future. You tell it what kind of input you're going to give it in the future and what kind of output you expect it to give you back. For instance, very simple example, you could say, when I give you the name of a fruit, respond with the color of that fruit. For example, if I say banana, you say yellow. 
Number four is to give constraints. So constraints help avoid irrelevant, inappropriate, or inaccurate responses by the language model. With this current prompt that we have here, if the AI receives something that's not a fruit, we cannot predict how it's going to respond. And also, we may not want it to respond with anything unless it's a cun. In this case, we could add something to our prompt like this. If it is not a fruit, respond NA. Only respond with single colors, say nothing else, even if I ask you a separate question. If your AI is doing anything mission critical, it's really important to specify that the AI should only say things it's really sure about, and you should also build in human observability in your apps. In other words, we really need to mitigate any errors or hallucinations that these language models can have, and you can do that pretty well in these prompts. Finally, number five is to iterate. You should start out with very simple prompts and then just see how it goes. Don't feel like you need to follow all of these complex tips. They're just here in case you need them. But if you're not getting what you want from the AI, do not be afraid to give more and more and more detail until you're getting exactly the output that you want. Prompts can actually end up being very, very long, and the models these days can definitely handle this. Now, looking at this on screen right now, you might be thinking, hey, this is a really long prompt. I do not want to have to write this many instructions to my AIs all the time, and you don't. But you can also get AI to help you write prompts themselves. In fact, that's exactly what I did here. I told ChatGPT with a few lines what I was trying to achieve with my prompt and that I wanted to create a really good prompt that was highly specific for another AI, and it helped me write this. So by defining a persona, guiding the response format, providing examples, constraints, iterating on your prompts, you can significantly improve the quality and relevance of the AI's output. AI loves context, whether that's extra knowledge from relevant data in your app or PDFs or accompanying materials of any kind. With the way that you can build and chain things together in Glide, you can really provide this context much more than a simple chat message in a chatbot.